the dog family. Hi guys, so this is going to be our first ever Working Mama Wednesday. I'm really excited about starting this series on our channel and kind of speaking to all of the working moms out there and maybe moms that aren't working moms, but at some point plan to be a working mom and transition to you know, from stay at home to working mom. So if you guys are new to our channel, my name is Kimmy and I do videos about motherhood, our family, recipes, DIYs, all those kind of fun things. So if you're interested in that, I would love for you to follow along. Go ahead and click subscribe and we'll have new videos for you every week. So for this first video, I wanted to share with you guys five things that I was told as a working mom prior to having Emma that I've just found to not be true. Um, a little backstory for those of you who maybe haven't followed our journey for a long time. Um, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I started getting into this whole YouTube world. And I knew that I was gonna be a mom who was working full time. And at that time, it was very hard for me to connect with a lot of women because a lot of moms on the YouTube community are stay at home moms or they're part time working moms. And it's a very different world when you have a child and you're are working a 40 hour job. So it was very nerve wracking, I guess you could say, not knowing really what to expect and how things were gonna go. And you hear a lot of things from different people about what life is gonna be like as a working mom. And in all fairness, a lot of the people that say those things aren't mothers who work. So I wanted to share just a couple things that I was told that I found to not be true. And I hope that if you're a working mom, or like I said, a future working mom, that this will help ease some of your nervousness with um, the transition and leaving your little one at home. So one of the first things that I was told is that your child isn't gonna be as attached to you because you're not with them all the time. And I just found that to be 100% inaccurate. I feel that, you know, Emma's now four, but when she was little and she was um, in care of, um, she was in care of my mother for the first year of her life, and then she moved to a home daycare. And I just did not find that to be true at all. I found that if anything, it made our bond stronger because she loved the time she got to spend with me. She knew that mommy wasn't always there and so when I was there, there was lots of smiles, lots of cuddles, lots of happiness and um, she just loved it and we've had an amazing bond and still do to this day. And I don't feel that because I'm a working mom that it makes any difference in the sense of how she and I connect and um, I was ex Emma was exclusively breastfed and of anything because of that um, being a working mom she she just connected with me on the same level as if you were a stay-at-home mom so that's just definitely not true one of the second things I was told was that daycare and your relationship with your daycare provider might be rocky or your child might love them more than they love you I know it's crazy <laughs> And I definitely did not find that to be true as well. Um, Emma has been at the same home daycare since she was one and a half, and we absolutely love our daycare people. And I love the relationship that Emma has with them. She has built a really close bond with the people that care for her every day. And I love that she understands that there's other people besides mom and dad who are important in her life, and that she will be able to create create connections with and I'm actually really sad for her to have to like leave there at the end of this year because she loves her daycare people she genuinely loves them and they genuinely love her and it's so nice to know that you have somebody that's caring for your child when you're not there that loves them truly from the bottom of their heart and there's not Every, I know people have had really bad um, experiences with daycare and we are very fortunate to have the people that we have. Um, but that was definitely something that I was told and I've actually been very surprised at how I appreciate that connection that Emma has with the people that care for her every day and how important that role is to her life. The thing that I was told is that your child will be neglected because they are in the care of somebody who's also caring for multiple children. And I definitely don't agree with that at all. If anything, I find that Emma has learned to use her voice, express herself, and um, be patient because she is around other children. Her needs are never neglected. Um, but she does know when it's her time to speak up and have her voice be heard over a crowd of other people. And I think if anything, that just benefits her all the more in life. Um, and I feel like at four, I've seen a huge 
difference in her between children that she's around that don't go to daycare and children that she, you know, goes to daycare with. And it's just not to say that, um, you know, if a child stays home, they don't develop that. But I don't ever feel like Emma's been neglected. Yep, she might not get attention 24 seven, but really, that's not a good thing to teach them in life. <laughs> um, when she's little, yes, they need care, obviously. But I feel like, you know, once they're past that infant stage, it's okay to teach them that there is gonna be independence and that you're not gonna be tended to 24 seven and you need to have a little bit of patience, understand that others needs go before yours sometimes. And so I, I don't necessarily agree that, agree that it's neglect. Um, I just think it, if anything, it teaches her to be vocal and express herself when her voice needs to be heard. The fourth thing I was told was that your child is not going to be as smart because they're not getting that individual attention. Um, this kind of ties to number three a little bit, but um, I definitely don't agree with this one as well. I found that Emma has learned to speak and express herself, kind of like what I said earlier. Um, but if anything, I feel like she is more developed than other kids her age because there are other babies and you know younger toddlers and other kids that she is interacting with every day and she has learned so much about you know using her words and expressing her thoughts and I don't at all feel like she is underdeveloped. If anything, we hear constantly that she's very smart for her age and I think that because she is in a group setting like that every day, that that attributes to her developing um, a different set of skills than if I was just me and her all the time. So. Again, not to say that children at home <laughs> don't develop the same way, um, but I'm just expressing this from the working mom point of view. Number five, I was told your child is always gonna be sick because they're in daycare. I definitely don't agree with that. Emma does get sick. The kids in the daycare, they all get sick together. One of them gets something, the next one does. I totally agree with that. Um, but I don't think that she's sick all of the time. Um, <laughs> It's the same, I kind of relate it the same as once your kid goes to school, they're gonna get sick because that's their first exposure really to a group cesspool of germs. So I don't think that her being in daycare necessarily means she's more sick than children her age. Um, I just I just did not find that to be true, but I mean, not to say she doesn't ever get sick because things will go around. They'll all get colds at the same time. It'll go one, 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 and then the next, and then they're done. And so it, it, does, it definitely does happen, but I wouldn't say that she's sick all the time or that she's at an additional risk by being in daycare. So those are just five things that I was told as a working mom that I've just found out to be true. There's probably other things, and if you guys were told something that you found out to be true, I'd love for you to share it in the comments below, and um, we can chat about it because I know that there's things that I'm forgetting, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's any suggestions of things that you would like to see me talk about or cover um, from my point of view as a full-time working mom, I would love to hear them. So you can always leave those below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and we'll see you guys next Wednesday. Bye.